from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Welcome to Praise the Lord. We are so glad that you're with us today. Many of you have tuned in for a reason that's peculiar to you. You have needs, you have desires, you have hurts. Main thing is you're looking for answers. And today we have some answers. I'm Pastor Pat McGuffin and we're so glad that you're here with us. We're so glad you're going to tune in and listen to an amazing guest and worship with us today too. Well, let's start with prayer. Father God, we thank you for this great day. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. We say that you are the king and you hold all answers to everything facing us individually, as families, and even as a nation, God. So we look to you. We rest in you. And we say, Father, open the eyes of our understanding that we might hear you for the things you want to connect with us on today. And we bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad you're here. So worship with us today. Let's start with a time of worship and get right to our guests. Lift up your eyes on high, behold the Lamb, perfect sacrifice, He paid it all, yes He did, He paid it all for you. Lift up your eyes on high and behold the Lamb, the perfect sacrifice. He paid it all. Yes, He did. He paid. Yes, 
right now. Healing wine, healing rain, Lord divine, the Holy One, the balm of the See, here, here. What a great, great way of us getting into the presence of God and hearing from Him as we connect with His Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I'm very privileged to have with us as our guest, Chaplain Edwin Quintana. Thank you so much for being with us. We, we're just so glad that you're you. with us and going to share with us a little bit about the, the chaplaincy. You, we, we know about pastors and we want to hear what's different on a chaplain. We have chaplains help us in hospitals and in jails and in police departments and so uh, tell us a little bit about what is what is the function of a chaplain you know um, we have an organization that teaches folks to be a chaplain and a lot of them are pastors deacons and elders um, but the main thing that I want that God has put in my heart for people to become a chaplain is to be a chaplain at work constantly to be transparent um, that is the most important thing that I, that, that I want to accomplish for the kingdom of God. And by being transparent and approachable and being non-evasive compared to being an ordained minister, you'll be able to minister Jesus Christ, which is the objective, in a non-evasive non way. Wow. So, um, so you're, tell us about your organization. You said that you have an organization for chaplains. Yes. What is the name of it? The name of the organization, Pastor, is uh, Inter America's Chaplains Association, and um, we just started. We have we had a graduation in Ocala. Uh, we had 35 graduates. Mm -hmm. We're about to have a graduation in Orlando on August 20th, and um, we are looking to probably have 50 to 60 people. God, God be the glory. Uh, faithful. Um, uh, faithful servant leaders and that are committed you know and um, and we vet them carefully want to make sure that you know that they represent the kingdom of God you know this the organization is just you know it's, it's God's mm -hmm. it's God. absolutely now you've before you founded this one you have been involved with other chaplains organizations also tell us a little bit about that yes I was involved with a multicultural organization based out of New York. We worked hard. Um, the Genesis came from 9-11. And we, God helped us, use this as vehicles to grow it to 9,000 plus chaplains today. Wow. To like 22,000 plus and um, doing God's work. And um, now since I'm living here in Central Florida, um, we're looking to expand and grow and, um, you know, take it to where God wants us to take it. Wow. Now, where, where are chaplains ministering? Where, what's the spectrum that they go and serve the kingdom of God in? What are the places? Pastor, that's, it, it's ambiguous. <laughs> it really is because, you know, um, I'm a chaplain for the police department. I was also a chaplain for a hospital in Central Florida. Um, let, let's go to the basics. Chaplains minister in hospitals, prisons, hospices. Um, they minister at rehabs, um, at re-entry locations. But, you know, they also, we have workplace chaplains, you know, that work, you, you know, um, in corporations. But, you know, we have chaplains that just want to concentrate 
on the homeless. We have chaplains that we want to concentrate on people to get a job. We want chaplains to, to, to minister and sit down with folks and role play to get a job, to help them get their resume. And then not only help them get a job, though, but to grow so they can get promoted. You know, we have chaplains that just want to concentrate on the homeless. What to do with a homeless person? Who to call? Where to take them? What organization will take the males? What organization will take the females with kids? Or what organization takes all of them together? Um, it's ambiguous. We want to feed people. Um, just like Matthew 25, we want to feed them. We want to give them water. We want to dress them. Um, there's a lot of folks suffering from anxiety, um, postpartum depression. You know, they just, we want to be everywhere. We want to be at the school levels, you know, um, colleges, universities. There's so much date rape, so much substance abuse going on in universities and colleges. We don't even have to wait to go there. Middle school, we got young kids walking around with Red Bull and have alcohol in there. So we want to minister to them. We want to catch them early. But the main thing we want to do is mentor, and we want to disciple folks. Because I'm not knocking no churches, but the church has gotten from a, a little away from discipleship. And that's what we want to do. We want to go out and disciple. And, and, and our, our vision statement is chaplains at work, making a positive difference in the community. That's what we want to do. That's what we want, and we, we want to do it through the Holy Spirit, and we want to be disciples cons consistently. We want to be, we want to be consistent. Wow, that's that's great. So what you're, what you're painting for me is a picture of men and women chaplains that are throughout the segment of of com of the community, not just in the traditional places that that people think of, like the prisons or the sheriff's department, but all throughout the community. Uh, tell me a little bit more. I know before the cameras clicked on, uh, discipleship is heavy on your heart. Um, tell me what shape that takes. What, what does that look like to you when you say you want to disciple these chaplains? Here's what happens, um, and I see. You know, there are so many different percentages of, of it's usually in the mid-70s or low-70s of people that are unchurched. They're in church for a reason. You know, a lot of Christians have great intentions, but we have to be consistently consistent, and we have to disciple folks. If we lead someone to the Lord, what happens afterwards? We should call on people. If you're a minister, you know, don't call to condemn someone because they didn't come to church. Call on them to see how they're doing. You know, we just want to love on people. We want to help them. You know, one of the things our chaplains do is we help with car washes to raise money for churches. We help... Um, People when they're moving, you know, we want to take elderly that needs medication, you know. But while we're doing all this at the same time, we want an opportunity to minister. And again, in a non-invasive way, we don't want to force Christianity on people. But in a way that we, that we train in being transparent, that a way that they'll be able to see it through us. They'll see him through us mm -hmm. and we'll be able to minister that way but uh, the main objective is that we'll be able to minister more to them mm -hmm. and guide them into a church and guide them into into bible studies into classes yeah that's excellent so so you see part of your organization as um helping assisting uh chaplains to grow in their own walk with the lord but then to have a very strong practical outworking into the community um, what is it like? I know you're currently uh, a chaplain in Marion County or Ocala? Ocala Police Ocala Department. Ocala Police Department. Yes, Pastor. What, what are some of the things that you um, uh, encounter, especially during these troubling times when our police officers and our first responders are, are um, disrespected and dishonored like they're doing, um, like people are doing to them? Um, how do you work with these policemen? You know, it's so true. Uh, you know, I wish people could put themselves in a police, law enforcement's position, okay? They are, they are working hard, <clears throat> and they are disrespected, Pastor. But you see, also police officers, you have to give them their space, and you really have to be very non-invasive when you're approaching them. You know, you just be yourself. You know, if they're willing to talk, you know, just talk. The main thing is to build a connection, a caring connection, a caring 
approach, a caring, then build a caring relationship. Um, and then and then just work with them, you know, doing little things like, you know, getting a few folks together, churches together to bring food to them on holidays, you know. Hopefully they'll talk to you, you know, um, if they do, you minister to them. Um, but our approach is different with police officers and first responders. We just basically ask them simple questions like, how are you doing? Or just smile at them. Mm -hmm. A simple smile sometimes goes a long way. Or even if you just tell them, hey, I hope you have, you have a great day today, you mm -hmm. know, and I hope you're blessed and protected, you mm -hmm. know. But um, it's, it's challenging, especially during these times. Yes, and I would imagine it is. It, it tends to harden the police officer and uh, uh, all the disrespect and dishonor coming toward them. And yet, uh, to know that there is a God who's, who's caring for them, who loves them, who walks with them, I think is, is real, a reassuring thing that you chaplains, uh, you chaplains do. You've been involved in jail ministries also? I have, I have. Tell us about that. I, I've, I was involved in uh, Marion County Sheriff's Office as a chaplain, um, doing jail ministry, ministering to prisoners, you know, um, Ministering to staff at jails, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, there's there's a big need to pray for not only people in jail, but for also for correction officers and law enforcement, police officers. Mm -hmm. I just I'm appealing to everyone to pray for them. They need all the prayers they can, mm -hmm. but they do protect us. Mm -hmm. The prison ministry is very unique because you know, in Matthew 25 it says, you know, we should care about and visit people in prison, mm -hmm. you know. Typically people are more concerned and understandably they're more concerned about the victim. But you know, God is worried about the sick, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to give them hope, mm -hmm. you know, and we work together with various th different organizations, like an organization called Prisoners of Hope, and we try to minister the word to them. Mm -hmm. We try to minister getting back into society, mm -hmm. you know, and um, getting them to not be institutionalized. Mm -hmm. that, that spirit or mindset of being institutionalized, we want them to come out, you know, and slowly, you know, internalize into society and be a blessing to many. Mm -hmm. and, to, and their testimony is so vital mm -hmm. because they have a strong testimony that would minister to so many young kids mm -hmm. in school, especially in school, catch them when they're young. They could be such a big blessing. Absolutely. And so they are. Do you have like discipleship programs that sometimes you're asked to do in these prisons? Yes, sir, I do. Uh -huh. So the prisoners would uh, attend during certain times and um, be able to grow in the Lord and their understanding of Him and who He is and and, and then some practicalities of what Scripture, I'm sure, teaches. Um, yes, sir. So that's all, all part of it. Um, when, uh, when people get out of prison, uh, it, do you ever find that sometimes they still seek you out and want you to pray for them or things of that nature? Pastor, I'll tell you what happened to me one day in Marion County. Um, there was a tall guy who was in camouflage, and I'm at a Christian event that we were doing, putting together, and all of a sudden, he's just coming towards me, and I'm looking from the corner of my eye. He's a big guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I turned to the side, because I, you know, I, like in a defensive mode, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, he's coming. He's coming, and you know I'm smiling, and I'm saying a little prayer. You know, who is this guy? <laughs> and he said, uh, "Chaplain, remember me." And he just hugged me. Wow. And I said, um, "I'm sorry. Refresh my memory." You know, and um, he just said that after ministry service in the jail, um, he said that I took the time to pray for him, and he just looked at me and and said, look, I'm drug free, you know, I'm, I, I'm my family, I got my family back together, I'm back with my wife. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I said, it wasn't me, <laughs> it was Jesus mm -hmm. using his vehicle. And um, those are the good, great, good stories. And God is so glorified when you see that. Some, there are many in jail that, you know, that are religious, uh, 
they, they're just religious. And when they come out, the first thing they leave back is their Bible. You know, and I, the, our objective is to reach people in jail and, and have them have the Holy Spirit burning inside in them that they're going to want, they, they're going to want to find a good church where they can grow, be discipled, and, 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 and give their testimony. Mm. You know, their mess will be their message. Mm, absolutely. Let me, uh, let me ask you, in your new organization, does, uh, how would somebody go about, um, uh, if, they're view if they're watching us today and they've thought about maybe a career shift or something they'd like to do additional to their career, how would they go about becoming a chaplain and finding a place of service? Well, the first thing I would do is um, I, would, I would say they would have to pray on it because this is a calling. It's not, just, it's not just something that somebody wants to be a chaplain to sign up, you know. Um, we want people that have a calling from the Lord, you know. They're interested in joining our organization. Our organization is um, it's on website, interamericaschaplains.org. All together, interamericaschaplains.org. And... Um, you know, we'll we'll go through an application process, you know, and um, we'll we'll talk, and you know, we'll see if this is, you know, of God, and we'll you know we'll pray together and talk about it, and hopefully, if it is, you know, um, we'll get them, we'll get them in into the seminary, and we'll get them to take the courses, and um, hopefully, get them to graduate and get them out there on the field. Wow, that's great. Now, um, are some of these seminaries that you might connect them with, uh, are, are any of them online? What if they have a day job? Is there an opportunity for them to get continued education maybe at night? Good question. Um, we, uh, we, we, we do, our, the way we do our chaplains is uh, we do it throughout Central Florida. Um, we have a class in Ocala, in Orlando, going to Tampa. Gainesville, Jacksonville, um, but you can go online, okay, and um, you can take the course at your pace, mm -hmm. okay, and then um, we'll test you, right, and um, and then we'll interview you, and we'll continue building the rapport and vetting mm -hmm. process, and then um, they'll be able to be a, a servant leader. We want them to be a chaplain at work. Mm, I like that. Edwin, um, what I'm hearing you say about your organization is, uh, to use different terms than chaplain, what I'm seeing you do is you are pastoring pastors, or you are discipling chaplains. Whichever terminology you want to use, you're, you're influencing the influencer. In a non-evasive way. I'll give you an example. There's a difference. I'm an ordained minister. I have a lot of pastors in, in, in my class. And um, I'll give you an example. If you, so, let's say you, you show up to a scene and a member of your church just lost, God forbid, to anyone that's out there, God forbid, um, they just lost a few family members in a car accident. Let's say that, for example. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they may be a devout Catholic, I mean Christian, you know, a devout Christian. And all of a sudden, you know, we as Christians, doesn't matter what denomination, Catholic, uh, Christian, uh, Evangelical, Presbyterian, Lutheran, you know, w we usually greet people and say, God bless you. Well, I, I try to train our chaplains not to say God bless you in a scene like that. And I'll tell you why, Pastor, because, you know, you may be very strong in your walk, but, you know, one of the, st one of the stages of, of grief is anger. And they may be angry at the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to be able to minister to them. You know, and I try to teach them to just say, I'm sorry for your loss, mm -hmm. you know, and be genuine about it. Mm -hmm. You know, be so transparent and then just hug them mm -hmm. and tell them, look, I'm here for you and, and really mean it, you know, and um, at whatever time, even if you want to talk or anything. And that's the difference from that a lot of pastors lead. You know, um, I remember one situation where family lost uh Members, a pastor went up to him and says, God bless you, God is in control. He's right, by the way. But you know, at that moment, it didn't resonate with mm -hmm. the victim's family, the family of the victims. And um, so I tried to, you know, to be neutral. Chaplaincy is the ministry of presence, is the ministry of healing, the ministry of being neutral, mm. the ministry of listening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even have to 
say anything. Just sit down and listen. And you may not even get to pray, but it doesn't stop you from praying for them in silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what I try and teach. And, and, and I, I find a lot of ministers um, get a different approach. It's, it's just a different approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in hospitals, chaplaincy, um, I would imagine you're dealing with a lot of people that are questioning what in the world just happened. What's going on with my health? Um, and like you said, even potentially anger of what just happened in my life. You know, why am I here? Uh, how do you work with and train a hospital chaplain? You know, when I was working in the hospital <clears throat> here in Central Florida, it was one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, you know, you just go in, you know, um, you, you just want to be non-invasive. You're part of, a chaplain is part of, non, of the pastoral care. You introduce yourself, you tell them who you are, you ask them if there's anything you can do for them. You ask them if you, they want prayer. If they say no, I still pray for them. Oh, why not? In fact, while you say that, why don't we pray for those that are listening right now? We have about a minute left. And would you mind praying for those that are hurting right now, that God's presence and power would invade their life? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. And Lord God, there's so much need out there. I ask dear God that you touch Touch everyone that has need right now, Lord God. I ask that you bring healing of all aspects, in the spiritual, in the physical, in the health, Lord God. I ask that you bring deliverance, Lord God. And Lord God, I just ask that you bring put people in their lives that will be able to minister to them and get you closer to you. Mm -hmm. And you will get nearer to them, Lord God. And I just ask that you be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to us. And uh, Chaplain Edwin, it's so great to have you come in and tell us thank a little bit guys. about what chaplaincy is all about, about your organization, about how you reach out and try and touch throughout the community, be it a business chaplain or an emergency uh, medical um, chaplain situation. Or even a street sign holder. Or a street sign holder, but um, somebody who is holding high the torch of Jesus Christ. That's right. Who is lifting up the answers that only He has. And um, the people that you are training are uh, greatly appreciated um, you, in, our, in our community. Um, they come at a point of need. And we are a needy nation. We are a needy people. Yes, sir. And uh, so we are so grateful for you being with us. Thank you for tuning in to Thank Praise you. the Lord. And God bless you as you face the issues you're facing and the power of Jesus come upon you today. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.